Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to look at AP Chemistry Unit 8, Section 6, which is all about the relative strength and weaknesses of acids. And there are a few different rules that we can use to help us understand how strong or how weak an acid is going to be. One rule that helps us with this is Coulomb's Law. Now, I know we've talked about Coulomb's Law quite a bit already in this course, but this, this, this actually does help us here. Um, you might notice that here I have the hydrogen halides. We have HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. And you might understand already that three of these are strong acids, aren't they? HCl, HBr, and HI. But for some reason, HF is not a strong acid. It is a weak acid. And why is that? Well, it has to do with Coulomb's Law. If you have two atoms that are very small, then they can get very, very close to each other. So H and F are both very small atoms. So they can get very close to each other. And because they have that small distance between them, they have a very strong interatomic attraction. That's Coulomb's Law. That's the distance part of, the, of that equation. That's the D part of Coulomb's Law. And as a result of that, since there's a strong attraction, this H right here is not going to fall off or be removed as readily as it will for the others. So that's the reason why HF is a weak acid and all your other hydrogen halides are strong acids. Now, as you move to the right, you notice that the atoms that hydrogen associates it with here are uh, much larger. In fact, iodine is the largest of these four, as we see. So that means that even though all three of these, HCl, HBr, and HI, are strong acids, we can say that HI is actually the strongest of those acids because of the relatively large distance between those two atoms. We can say that HI is going to be the strongest of those. And HBr is a little bit weaker, even though it's a strong acid too. HC a little bit weaker, HF is the weakest of all of those. Now, one thing that we mentioned earlier that we uh, would bear repeating is that the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. We actually did some mathematical calculations in an earlier video in this unit to show why that's the case. But as you can see, HI is a very strong acid, so that means that HI is going to release H+. plus. It's going to donate protons very, very easily, isn't it? Whereas its conjugate base, iodide, it could not attract a proton to save its life, in a matter of speaking. So I- minus is going to be a very, very weak base. And as we talk about acids getting weaker, like HF is a little bit weaker, well, that means fluoride is a little bit of a stronger base, isn't it? And then we start to get to some very weak acids like, like HCN. That means cyanide is a fairly strong base. And of course, water, water isn't really much of an acid or a base, is it? It's not that great of an acid most of the time anyway. Well, hydroxide is a fairly strong base, isn't it? So the, the weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base. And likewise, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. Now, if you prefer, you can imagine this as a competition for H pluses, for protons. If you take a look at these two equations here, we see that in this case, chloride is not doing a very good job of attracting hydrogens at all. And we see that because there's only a single-headed arrow here. It doesn't even go in that other direction. Chlor chloride can't attract any hydrogen ions that get thrown at it. So it is a pathetic base. Uh, on the other hand, nitrite attracts hydrogen ions very well. In fact, it attracts, it is able to, to keep most of the protons, most of the H pluses that get thrown at it from hydronium. And we know that because there's a whole lot more HNO2 than there is NO2 minus. That's because this equilibrium lies to the left. So you can think about it as a competition for protons. A really uh, good base, a really awful base. So in this case, uh, water is actually a better base than chloride is. Whereas over here, water is not nearly as good of a base 
as nitrite would be. Now there are some other rules for acid strength that you need to know about for the AP Chemistry uh, course. The first rule is that if you have an acid that has a hydrogen, an oxygen, and then some other atom, we'll just call it X, the more electronegative that that atom X is, the stronger the acid is going to be. And the reason for that is that electrons are going to drift toward that electronegative atom, and that's going to allow the hydrogen to essentially leave. So in these three cases here, we have HOX type compounds. Well, we know that fluorine is very electronegative, right? Looking at the periodic table, it's the most electronegative of, of all the atoms on the periodic table. So guess what? HOF is the strongest of those three acids. Chlorine is also rather electronegative, so it's going to be the next strongest of these three. And iodine is the lowest electronegativity of these three, so it would be the weakest of those three acids. So stronger electronegativity in a combination like this implies a, uh, a stronger acid. Here's another rule. If you have an acid with H, uh, one or more oxygen, and then another atom, which we'll call X, the more oxygens the acid has, the stronger the acid's gonna be. And that's because oxygen, oxygen just unto itself is a very electronegative atom. And so the electrons are gonna drift toward those oxygens, and that's gonna allow the, the hydrogen to pop off or to leave. So if we have this combination here, or these, these three acids, they all have H and Cl, but they have different numbers of oxygens. Well, the one that has the most oxygens is the strongest. So that's HClO4. And that makes sense because perchloric acid is a strong acid, isn't it? We actually have that on our list of the big six. And then HClO2, chlorous acid, would be the next strongest. And then HOCl or HClO, however you want to write that, uh, hypochlorous acid is a fairly weak acid, and we see that because it has fewer oxygens. Now, sometimes you'll be asked to uh, talk about the strength of weak organic acids. Now, organic acids, this is not something that we talk about much in AP Chemistry, but if you see a molecule that has this rough structure to it, it has a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then that carbon bond or that carbon atom is double is uh, bonded to an OH group here, um, and then the carbon is also bonded to something else that we'll call R. Uh, this is an organic acid. This R is probably some sort of organic group, maybe a uh, CH3 or some other carbon hydrogen uh, combination. This is an organic acid. You'll have a COOH tail on the end of it. And the more electronegative the atoms in this R group, the stronger the acid. And the reason for that is that if this R is more electronegative, the electrons are going to drift toward that R. It's going to allow the hydrogen to pop off in that case. So let's do a few examples here. In each pair of compounds below, which is the stronger acid? Well, we'll start with the first one. Here we have two organic acids, and hopefully you can see that there's an F here, which is very electronegative, whereas hydrogen's not that electronegative. So that means the first choice is going to be more electronegative and the stronger acid. In part B here, we have HO and then something else in each of these acids. Whichever one is more electronegative, that's the stronger acid. And I believe chlorine is a bit more electronegative than bromine. So that means HOCl should be the stronger of those two acids. In part C, we have H2SO3 and H2SO4. So if the only thing that's different is the number of oxygens, well, whichever one has more oxygens will be stronger, right? So that means H2SO4 is the stronger acid. That makes sense, too, because sulfuric acid is one of our big six strong acids. The last one here, HI and HCl. Well, they're both strong acids, aren't they? 
But technically, which one's a little bit stronger? Well, it would have to be HI because the distance between H and I is larger or, or longer than the distance between H and CL, you know, because I is just a larger atom and CL is a smaller atom. I hope you've learned something about the relative strength of these acids and how to determine that in this video. If you have, please uh, slam that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for 24 years, and my goal is for you to get the highest score that you can on the AP Chemistry exam. I've got well over 100 AP Chemistry daily videos, AP review videos. In my next video, we're going to go right on to Unit 8, Section 7. Hope to see you then.